There's a statement, Miss Manigault Newman's negative comments were given heightened veracity because of her relationship with the president. What did you mean by that? Well, Alvarosa, in multiple interviews that I re reviewed, um, purported to be a close associate of the president. Uh, she uh, purported and represented herself as a person who had intimate knowledge of the president. And therefore, she was very believable in her comments because of her closeness. She wasn't just a pundit or a person who wrote a book about the president. She's a person who stated over and over again about her close relationship to the president. Okay. Do you know how long Ms. Manigault Newman and Mr. Trump have known each other? False for speculation, Fox Foundation. Asked if he knows. I do not. Okay. Have you ever met Amorosa? I have not. Have you ever met Donald Trump? No. Are you a supporter of Donald Trump? Objection, relevance. You can, you can answer, Eric. Uh, I am not a supporter of the president. Okay. Have you ever provided him financial support or his campaign financial support? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, in fact, you believe he's a pathological liar, don't you? Uh, I do not believe he's a pathological liar. Did you not say on February 8, 2020 that the president's a pathological liar? I would have to have context to what the statement is. It's context is Pete Rose. Does that refresh your recollection? I can pull up the, the tweet. Please. Okay. Yes. Okay. It, do you own and manage the Twitter account, Eric W. Rose? I do. Did you on or about February 8, 2020, uh, tweet, I support, Pres uh, I support Pete Rose getting into the Hall of Fame for his on the field play. But now that a pathological liar is endorsing his induction, I may need to rethink my position. Yes. Did you, are you referring to Donald Trump? I don't know. I, I can't recall what the underlying tweet is or why. Okay. So I, I see the quote there, but I don't have anything that says that I'm seeing where I'm talking about the president. Fair enough. We'll attach that tweet as exhibit B. We may come right back to it. Okay. Pete Rose subtweet. So if, if you'll see in the original tweet, I don't know if you remember, but it was a guy named Jim. Jim I, can't, I, can't, I can't see anything. It just says John Phelps has started his screen sharing. <clears throat> so you, do you see the original tweet? I do not. Okay. Oh, you do not. Well, come on. Let's see. Tell you what, I'm just going to share my desktop. And can you see my whole desktop now? No, sir. Okay, it is saying it's sharing a tweet. You don't see that right now? No, sir. We don't see it, John. Okay. You see it now? Yeah, John. Okay, there we go. I don't know why it's, maybe it's just I'm not giving it time to load. So, who is Jim Newton? Uh, Jim Newton is a uh, former uh, editor at the Los Angeles Times, and I believe he now is a, a fellow at UCLA. I'm not sure of his current employment, but he's a former editor at the Los Angeles Times. Is he a friend of yours? Yeah. He's uh, not a friend, a person I've known for 30 years from a professional business relationship. I've never had drinks or dinner with somebody is a person who I've interacted with over my career. Okay. So I've got to do this in three pieces. So you retweeted Jim Newton 
And at the bottom of your tweet, we can pull that back up. It said it was only a matter of time and it references Donald Trump. Yes. Okay. So then we got to go to Donald Trump's tweet, which we have to get off of Twitter because he's no longer on Twitter. I, I, you know, now that I see it, I recall, I know the tweet you're referring to. The, the Donald Trump, Pete Rose. Yes, tweet. sir. Essentially, he says, um, Pete Rose played Major League Baseball for 24 seasons from 1963 to 1986 and had more hits, 4,256, than any other player by a wide margin. He gambled, but only on his own team winning, and he paid a decades-long price. Get Pete Rose into the Baseball Hall of Fame. It's time. So that was Donald Trump's tweet, to which I guess Jim Newton said this was only a matter of time, to then I guess what you said is, I support Pete, I support Pete Rose getting into the Hall of Fame, for his on the field play, but now that a pathological liar is endorsing his induction, I may need to rethink my position. So we kind of did a, a long wind up to continue with a baseball analogy <laughs> to ask, have you ever expressed an opinion that Donald Trump was a pathological liar? Apparently I have. Okay. Um, do you feel that your words have heightened veracity because you're doing work as an expert for the Trump campaign? Jackson Vegas the time. I actually feel that my work for the Trump campaign is more believable and reliable because it's been known uh, among my friends, my colleagues, and apparently my Twitter. I'm not a fan of the, the president, but my assignment here was very clear. It was to look not and, and not take uh, my opinion about the president because I was clear to everyone, yeah. but to look at a very narrow focus here, a singular focus on the statements that Omarosa made as a person who was close to the president and to determine and look at the media platforms that she aired her comments and look at what a corrective advertising campaign uh, would look like. And frankly, uh, that's what I did. Okay. It, did Omarosa influence your opinion in any way that Donald Trump is a pathological liar? The, uh, my, my, my report and my focus wasn't looking about what Omarosa influenced me. It was what her influence was to others based upon uh, a person who made comments and reported them as fact. Um, I don't know the president. I've never met the president. I can't, you know, I, I wouldn't be a, a reliable source for um, knowing anything about him. She was, and that's the focus of my report. Okay. Well, you, you said you wouldn't be a reliable source of, of anything about him. I mean, maybe not firsthand, but aren't, aren't you entitled as an American to have an opinion on the president? Objection relevance. You can answer. I've expressed my opinion about the president, which you've seen and others have seen and my friends have seen. Okay. But it doesn't, it doesn't stop me from being, uh, putting on my expertise and using the skills and knowledge I have to determine what a corrective advertising campaign would look like. Okay. And I, and I understand that. I'm just trying to understand if if Omarosa Manigault Newman influenced your negative opinions of the president? She did not. Okay. Have you identified anybody in the whole world specifically that Omarosa negatively influenced their specific opinion? Uh, I cannot. Have you identified anybody in the entire world that didn't donate to Donald Trump because of something Omarosa said or did? I cannot. Okay. Um, can you see my desktop? Yep. Okay. Is this a tweet that you sent? How do you wish? Yes. Um, 
who is, and I don't know how to spell, I don't know how to pronounce her first name, but who is Miss Maxwell? I don't, I don't know. I don't know who she is. I saw the tweet. Okay. Do you know who Jeffrey Epstein is? I do. I, 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 I mean, I believe Miss Maxwell is the person who I believe um, is being accused of providing women to Jeffrey Epstein. Right. In the, in the related article, um, it says that she was involved with recruiting and grooming girls as young as 14 into a circle of sex abuse. Now, those are allegations. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, that's, that's what the article said that is in the underlying tweet. Um, is that your understanding of who Gil Zane Maxwell is? Yes. Okay. Um, and apparently Trump said, but I wish her well, whatever it is. And was that what you were commenting about? Uh, I, this is an old tweet. I, I don't recall in the moment what I was. I think the tweet speaks for itself. Okay. Um, well, the, the subtweet under yours says one federal prosecutor on Trump's well wishes to Gilslane, Gilslane Maxwell. And then there's a quote. Uh, so do you agree that we're referring to something Trump said about Ms. Maxwell? Yes. Okay. Um, and what did you mean by how do you wish an accused sex trafficker well? I think it speaks for itself. Okay, I agree. Um, what did you mean by shocked he was able to refrain from using the word beautiful? I know exactly what I meant there. Uh, the president, from what I would watch on TV, everything was beautiful from his, you know, before he arranged his planes to wherever he was. Beautiful was the word that he used quite a bit. Okay. Do you, do you have an, you know, as of, gosh, let's just say July 21, 2020, did you have an opinion about whether you believe the president was sexist? Objection relevant. Relevance, excuse me. I never, I never thought about it. So I don't know that I had an opinion one way or another. Okay. Did you ever have an opinion about as of July 21, 2020, about whether the president was racist? Objection relevance. I don't know that I thought about it prior. No, the answer is no. Okay. As we sit here today, do you have an opinion as to what your personal thoughts are on whether Donald Trump is sexist? Same objection. I haven't thought about it and I don't have an opinion. Okay. Do you have an opinion as we sit here today about whether Donald Trump is racist? Same objection. I don't have an opinion. Okay. So if you don't have an opinion, that means Amorosa Manigault Newman certainly didn't influence your opinion. Is that fair? Objection asked and answered. As, as I've stated, and, and I apologize if I'm not making it clear, the, the scope of my assignment was to look at the statements that Amorosa made as a person who is a uh, close, trusted advisor, as she described it, not maybe those words, but uh, that she was close to the president and the statements she made and how they would be accepted, not how my opinions of a person who's never met the president. I understand. I'm just making sure she didn't have any influence on you and, and, and it sounds like she didn't. She did not. Do you recall saying that the president was wrong in the position he took um, related to the NFL Colin Kaepernick stuff? Yes. Um, did Amorosa influence that opinion? No. What did? Uh, I believe what influenced my opinion regarding what was it kneeling? Regarding that you indicated that the president was wrong. Well, even a quote you did to Newsweek. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you my personal feelings is that uh, NFL players ha should have the right to be actually all professional athletes to take a position and stand. Uh, take a, take a, oh, sorry, take a, 
to be able to kneel as part of a protest. I just don't see an issue with that. And is that based in the First Amendment? Based upon my belief. Okay. But it's not going to impact the sport and that people should be able to express themselves. It's just a personal belief. And we can go through these if we need to, but will you agree that you, you retweeted a Jim Newton comment that scientists, uh, that, sorry, that, that Trump shuns math, logic, reason, and truth? Yes. That on... Uh, I'm sure I've, I've tweeted many things about the president. I think it's pretty clear from what I've described. I have never been a supporter of the president, uh, even before he ran. Uh, but that's not the focus of my report. My focus of my report and what I was asked to do by the Trump campaign was extremely narrow. Right. And, and we're going to get line by line into your report. But um, I'm you'll see that I'm going to wind up somewhere too. Do you, and again, I can post it, but do you agree you retweeted a, a tweet by Jim Newton on September 10, 2016 that says Trump's a moron? Yes. Okay. And on September 22, 2017, um, a Jim Newton tweet that says, does anyone think Donald Trump knows more about health care than Jimmy Kimmel does? You re retweeted that? Yes. Uh, October 9, 2016, Jim Newton tweeted about the president being a bad person and you retweeted that? Yes. Did you retweet those because you agreed with them? I wouldn't retweet something that I didn't agree with. Fair enough. Um, 